What's going on, brews, ladies and gentlemen? In today's video, Mimic Brew, the raw card guy, the master setter guy, the raw card up and down on a weekly basis guy, is going to talk about sealed investing. Yes, I know, weird, it's strange. There's a million investor bros in why, 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 why Mimic Brew? Okay, here's the thing how they evolved reprints. I'm going to tell you why it doesn't matter, okay? And because I one, I love how they evolved and two, this is kind of a big deal as far as in the news this week. And I'm gonna basically talk about the Paldea Evolve reprint, why it's not a big deal. Chill, chill, chill. And it's gonna segue in to I'm just gonna come clean. I'm just gonna come clean and I'm gonna tell you guys basically about the Scarlet and Violet era versus the Sword and Shield era. I'm just going to give you my opinions, my thoughts, and I'm just going to come clean about, you know, there's some, like, Silver Tempest, there's some thoughts that I've had in the past where I was genuinely embarrassed, okay? Like, genuine people love Sword and Shield era so much that certain thoughts that I've had in the past, I've been genuinely embarrassed and I've kept them a secret. But if you follow me, and look, I got like 2,700 subs. Over 2,000 of those subs I've gained this year is Mimic Brew. So a lot of you haven't watched all my all my videos, of course, right? But if you're someone who has followed me for a long time, you already know my thoughts on the Scarlet and Violet era versus the Sword and Shield era. Because to be honest, I might be the first person on YouTube who is screaming from a mountaintop that the SV era is better than the Sword and Shield era. What? EMOTIONAL damn it! You know, nowadays, that's not a big deal. Who cares? A lot of people are starting to come around and starting to think that. But last year, when I first started saying it, I was literally alone on a freaking mountain. But first, before we get into that, and before we get into the Paldea Evolved being reprinted, um, it's Poke Positivity Month, so... I gotta go ahead and uh, show you guys today's giveaway. Houston, we have a problem. Here's the problem, guys. There's only a handful of days left in Polka Positivity September, and I have way too much stuff to give away. So for today's video, I am giving away the contents, keyword contents, of these three boxes, courtesy of My Retro Universe. That's right another my retro universe giveaway this guy sent me so much stuff to give away to you guys and okay so here's the thing i think i see evolving skies packs one right there i think i see another one right there and you know but here's the thing i also see that's a little open i see a little crease a little right there and i see a little here right there and this pack is missing so right here and now i'm gonna open all of these boxes it should be 15 packs and should be seven promos. So yeah, the winner of today's giveaway is going to get 15 packs, hopefully, maybe even some Evolving Skies packs and all these promos. And uh, let's just bust these open real quick and see what we got. Mimic Brew is goaded. Well, I was right about one thing. The winner will receive 15 packs and seven promos. Okay, here's the thing. On Evolving Skies packs, there is a green corner, but it's the it's the left corner that's green. On Evolving Skies packs, that corner is yellow. My freaking bad, okay? I'm sorry, but look, here's the thing. So, the winner will receive all of this, all of this, all of this. Vivid Voltage and Rebel Clash, those are two sets from Sword and Shield that a lot of people think are two of the worst sets from Sword and Shield. This plays perfectly into today's video, which is why I'm saying this. Shredded Fumble. A lot of people think Shredded Fumble is the worst Scarlet and Violet era set. Well, Houndoom and Persian in those hyper rares? Have you seen how valuable the hyper rares are from this set? All I'm saying is, so far, this is apparently the worst Scarlet and Violet set. And this set is so much better than this set. And so much better than this set. And we're going to talk about that today. I'm going to do a little comparing and contrasting the Scarlet and Violet era to the Sword and Shield era. 
But real quick, here's how you're going to win all 15 packs and 7 promos. All you have to do is go to My Retro Universe. Go to his YouTube channel because that dude is pumping out great content lately. Go to this video. Leave a comment. Mimic Brew. All you have to do is go to his channel. Subscribe. Leave a comment saying Mimic Brew. And I'm going to let him randomly choose one winner to win all this all you have to do is type mimic brew in his comment section of his video and even if you pull nothing out of all 15 packs you're at least getting a 12 dollar beautiful greninja promo again thank you my retro universe and yeah it's been one hell of a poke of positivity september and it wouldn't have been without him and shoved it right up your asshole that's what i did once again, huge thank you to My Retro Universe, and I'm not kidding, he is actually making very good YouTube content right now, which is specifically why I wanted to make you go check out his latest video and leave the comments, Mimic Brew, either by itself or in a sentence, do that, and you'll be automatically entered to win all those 15 packs and those 7 promos, okay? He's making great content, go check him out. I love spreading the polka positivity. And real quick, before I forget, I also have to announce the, the winner for last video, which is congratulations, Clefairy Girl Rage. You won the Zara uh, display box and a few other items, including the one of one first ever celebrations derpy queue. So Clefairy Girl Rage, congratulations. Hit me up on Instagram. And guys, if you're curious how I choose winners, Literally, I'm just letting it be known. It's completely random, but I lit Alexa. Alexa, see right there? Right, right there, there she is. Alexa chooses all the winners, okay? So it's Alexa's fault. And thank you, Alexa, for choosing Clefairy Girl Rage. She is always watching my videos. Thank you, Clefairy Girl Rage. All right, let's get in to why the Paldeer Evolved reprints do not matter at all. And then we're going to get into the Scarlet and Violet Era versus Sword and Shield Era. All right, here we go. Don't let your dreams be dreams. Sorry, I'm sorry. I know we're like seven minutes into this video and we're finally just now getting to the topic at hand. Um, there's just a lot of, like, that's even bad for Danny Phantom. I have no idea what I'm doing. Even he gets to the point quicker than that. But look, that's why I put chapters in all my videos for a reason, so you can skip ahead. And Poke Positivity is almost gone forever. Well, for a year, okay? So, but let's get into it. Paldea Evolved Reprints. Why the Paldea Evolved Reprint does not matter. I had to take the Mimic Brew costume off because I just, I assume that, uh, I'm going to move around and be very animated, and I just want to talk freely for a little while. Um, yeah, so, you know, the thing gets in the way and shit. So, okay, so Paldea Evolved, the reprints. What is it at right now? It's like 130, what was it at? It was at like 145, 150, now it's down to like 125. It doesn't matter. I'm going to tell you why it doesn't matter, okay, guys? First of all, when it comes to long-term investing, like sealed product investing, the most important thing at the end of the day is the IP that the product is tied to. Is the IP, the Pokemon Company International, okay? Is that IP going strong? And do you believe that in the future it will still be going strong? Do you think that 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, do you think that the Pokemon Company and Pokemon in general will still be a very, very large part of pop culture? Do you think the biggest IP in the world, Pokemon, do you think that will still have a massive influence on pop culture in general 20 years down the road, 30 years down the road, whatever? If you're like me, the answer is yes. I am someone who thinks as long as I am here on planet Earth, the Pokemon company will maintain its relevancy and it will not be like 99 out of 100 other TCGs that come and go by the wayside that you cannot safely invest in for the long term. Pokemon, in my opinion, I do not have a crystal ball. I think for so many reasons we are going to get into that the Pokemon company, the Pokemon IP, the biggest brand in the entire world, I think 
they are going to be very relevant longer than I am alive. So with that said, given those parameters, sealed investing long term, that is the position I take when I talk about sealed investing. And I'm talking about specifically Pokemon. I'm not talking about all other collectibles in general. I'm not talking about Beanie Babies. I'm not talking about you know, sports cards from the 90s. I'm talking about the Pokemon IP and Pokemon cards. So, so we're on the same page here. The long-term viability of all of these sealed products, in my opinion, is tied to the long-term health of the Pokemon company in general. Okay? So, Palais Evolve, we'll get into that in a sec. I want to finish what I'm saying here. So the Pokemon Company, we have various factors that are keeping the Pokemon Company alive, keeping it fresh, keeping it, you know, a very successful company year after year after year. From the TCG itself, which is becoming more and more popular year after year after year, to innovations in things like Pokemon Go or now the upcoming Pokemon Pocket. They are always staying relevant. They are always coming up with new ways to zap your wallet dry and keep you craving more and more content, cards, media, games, you name it in general. The Pokemon company knows how to do it. That is how they became the biggest IP in the world. More than that, let's get into the whole POW World controversy and Nintendo suing POW World. This is just another drop in the bucket that I'm going to bring up for a sec to prove how powerful this company is. This is one of the few companies in the world that is literally backed by an entire first world country. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is Japan, the country of Japan, politics, things in Japan. They understand the Japanese government. They understand how important Pokemon is to their imports and exports. You know, their entire, you know, national kind of branding is tied to Pokemon. You can't think Japan without thinking Pokemon. They, they literally are, you know, hand in hand, peanut butter and jelly, okay? And the Japanese government knows that. And the Japanese government right now is allowing Nintendo to sue POW World on a patent that was just approved three months ago. It is not because POW World made characters that look like Pokemon characters. It is because Pokemon retroactively just got a patent where if you throw something at a living creature and catch it in that object, that is copyright infringement on Nintendo now. So that is the grounds that POW World is getting sued on is because you throw a ball to catch an animal. That and one other strange, very weird technicality that should honestly scare all game developers like immensely. And the, the scary thing is, is even though Nintendo shouldn't win this, they probably are because the Japanese government will pretty much always side with Nintendo and Pokemon, even if it doesn't make sense, okay? And I'm just bringing that up because that is just another example of why the Pokemon company, uh, Creatures Inc., Nintendo, why all those companies in Japan are so incredibly strong and probably will be for a very long time. It is just ingrained in Japanese culture at this point, okay? So, now let's get bring it back to Paldea. Okay, so Paldea Vault. Whatever the price was and whatever the price is going to drop to, let's say it drops to 120 a box, okay? What I'm saying is I don't think you should even care. I don't think it matters. And from sealed, here's what it here's the difference between successful sealed investing and wasting your time and falling out of it and not successfully sealed investing. Time horizon, okay? In general, people who seal who invest in sealed Pokemon products and they have a time horizon greater than three years end up making a very good profit, okay? Because that way your sealed product, it increases in value and it increases in value enough 
to cover things like shipping fees, eBay selling fees, taxes, all that kind of stuff that you kind of forget about when you're sealed investing. Okay, like it's bad enough sealed investing takes up a lot of space, but then you go to sell the product and you got to pay a ton for shipping. You got to give 10, 12% to eBay or wherever you're selling from. And if you, you know, you, let's say you, you're not financially stable enough to hold on to your sealed investments for greater than three years, there's a very good shot that you're just going to be parking money into a product that you eventually sell in a year and a half or two and make such a small profit that it doesn't even cover those fees and uh, shipping that I mentioned, okay? So at the end of the day, the most important thing when it comes to investing in Pokemon, whether it's Paldea Evolve booster boxes or not, is time horizon and just simply holding and just holding on to your investments for three to five years, even better, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, People like Rudy from Alpha Investments own probably 10% of everything that exists in the market today, and he's not selling any of that shit for 20 or 30 years, okay? I'm just saying, that's how you truly become a successful sealed investor, is one, already have a stable enough financial scenario to where you can comfortably invest in these sealed products for a greater than three year time horizon. The longer, the better. The whole one to two year thing, it's not gonna work out for you, I'm sorry. So if you're someone that is struggling to make ends meet, you should probably not be a sealed investor and park all your money into a bunch of ETBs and booster boxes if at the first sign of danger you need to sell everything and maybe even lose 10% because you only had the stuff for six months or a year. Okay, and then now the fees and the shipping and blah, 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 blah. Okay, so, I am not a sealed investor. I only invest in very specific sealed things like error boxes or just boxes that happen to be uh, beautifully displayed. Like behind me over there on that slab shelf is a, what is it? It's a Pikachu and Zekrom battle box. And it has a beautiful set of Pikachu and Zekrom promos in it that are on display and they all look perfectly centered. So they're, they're right there. There's a sealed product I have because it's just a beautiful display box. So beautiful display boxes are very cool, that's me. But I'm, again, I do raw, graded, and master setting. So I don't, I, don't, I don't generally speak on sealed investing because I know there's plenty of those people out there for you guys to consume. Like, you know, I like to differentiate myself a little bit and I like to focus on raw cards, okay? But again, so Palais Evolved, I think Palais Evolved at the end of the day has already like assured itself as one of the better, if not one of the best, Scarlet and Violet era sets to come out. Even with the Team Rocket set coming out in the near future, even with the uh, Terrastalized Evolution specialty set coming out, even with Trainers Pokemon, which I don't believe that'll be one set, I believe they're just going to finish and have Trainers Pokemon in like every set to, to finish out the last year or so of Scarlet and Violet. So even with all that stuff on the way, and obviously, Surging Sparks is going to be a big deal, too. It's looking like a big set with difficult pull rates. It could be the first big set since Paradox Rift to have difficult pull rates, except way more difficult pull rates. So there's a good chance that Surging Sparks is going to potentially blow Paldea Evolved out of the water. Depends how many IRs, depends how many SIRs. That is still kind of to be determined. But I'm just saying, even with all the cool stuff coming up in the future, Paldea Evolved, in a lot of people's minds, is one of the best Scarlet and Violet era sets and probably will stay that way. And it's a big set, and it's very hard to pull any one of those certain IRs or any one of those certain SIRs. So a reprint, the price you saw on the screen that I threw up where it dipped down to 130 this is essentially already baked in. This, this reprint, maybe it goes down to 120 but just like the Japanese Scarlet and Violet reprint, do not get caught up in the moment. Check back in January, in three or four months from now, and let's see what Paldea of all booster boxes are at, okay? Because they ain't going to be 120, all right? I'm just, I'm calling that now. Just mark this, flag this, I don't care. This happens so damn much. Everything in this Pokemon hobby is on a three-year hype cycle. This is a theory. I wasn't planning on talking about this, but I have a theory about Pokemon in general. Everything is uh, fueled by hype, 
and everything comes and goes in these strange three-year intervals doesn't matter whether you're talking about like tag team and gx cards or say last april the uh, sword and shield bubble you know i guarantee you three years from now there's going to be another sword and shield bubble and everyone's going to be talking about alt arts from sword and shield again okay it's just this weird three-year where there's so much cool shit in pokemon that you can only focus on one type of card or set or something for so long before you have to forget about it for three years and then you and then that way enough new people enter the hobby enough people leave that it's okay to have another bubble about another thing i swear to god look into this the more research you do on a three-year hype cycle you will realize i am right in things like it's pokemon go 2016 hidden fates cosmic eclipse 2019 it, 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 just the waifus the japanese like the, everything's on this weird three-year anyway and that's all good that's all healthy that's all generating uh new topics new things to talk about and it's just all reasons why long-term investments why sealed investing even though i don't talk about it it's not because i don't believe in it it's because i think it's boring and i know there's way more than enough people that are willing to tell you these booster boxes are going up you know you don't need me okay you need me to do all the raw card market stuff and, and talk about master setting okay that's what i like to talk about so again so Paldea Revolved, yes, it's getting a reprint, and guess what? It's not the last set. Um, coming up in the next month or two, you know, we might, I don't know if we need a Paradox Rift <laughs> reprint, but that might happen, or a, uh, you know, uh, Scarlet and Violet 151 reprint. That's, look, and even when that happens, you're going to see some stuff tank, and you're going to see it come back and, and be better than ever eventually. Why? It's because the Pokemon IP itself is better than ever eventually and always prevails and finds refreshing ways to stay relevant make a shit ton of money and get you craving more and more and more the reason that they preview every next set the week or two before the actual next set comes out is because everything in pokemon is generated on hype and they know that they control hype and they know how much hype matters and they know there will always be a new hype and they are really good at generating hype okay pokemon company biggest ip in the world for a damn good reason backed by a very intelligent very well respected first world country and look they are just if they go down they'll go down together but if they stay strong they stay strong together and yeah so okay look now let's get into scarlet and violet versus sword and shield and i want to just be straightforward honest about my opinions even in the present time that was sword and shield okay here we go here we go here we go here we go crown zenith and evolving skies those two sets out of 18 total sets released during sword and shield five years from now 10 years from now in my opinion evolving skies and crown zenith not even brilliant stars i know not even brilliant stars <laughs> Evolving Skies, Crown Zenith, those are the two sets that the Sword and Shield era will be remembered for long term. Crown Zenith is going to take a while and it's going to inchworm when we already know the way Evolving Skies goes, okay? All the other sets, look, it was very cute, it was very good, it was a nice trial, and it was very cool of the Sword and Shield era to give us, you know, the last four sets had trainer gallery cards. So we had 30 in each set for a total of 120 trainer gallery cards those were a very nice addition and definitely made sword and shield a better era and filled out some mid-tier value that it was severely lacking okay but even most people will tell you most trainer gallery cards just seem to not be worth near as much as they should and a lot of that's because the yellow border ones are the most abundant and they're very the, the yellow border ones are very common okay so it is what it is but the Sword and Shield is very heavily skewed towards the alt art sets that were the latter half, the second half of Sword and Shield. And it doesn't really get good until you get to the very end where you have alt arts and trainer galleries, which is only four total sets, okay? So you're talking six sets, right? Six, six sets total with alt arts, four of them that have trainer galleries and alt arts. And <clears throat> to be honest, the real superstar, I mean, yes, Evolving Skies is a superstar, but the real, you know, superstar is the last set, Crown Zenith. That set 
is what gave us the biggest, biggest preview of what is to come with the Scarlet and Violet era. That Galarian Gallery is a preview to illustration rares. It's just, it just is, okay? I mean, and so, if you look at the first half of the Sword and Shield block versus the first half of the Scarlet and Violet block, and if you really just go look yourself, and, you know, you could do a one-to-one, -one, like base set versus base set, and, you know, whatever. You could do that. And if you do do that up until you get to Evolving Skies, which is set release number seven, I think, it's Scarlet and Violet just absolutely obliterates every single early SWSH era set. It really does. And not only that, Scarlet and Violet, with the illustration rares having so much value, and then the SIRs having so much value, and a lot of the full arts looking incredible. Like, Scarlet and Violet 151 full arts look incredible. I think the Stellar Crown full arts look incredible. Um, there's just a lot more consistency and a lot more value top to bottom in every single Scarlet and Violet era set versus every single Sword and Shield set. Again, Sword and Shield, great for beautiful alt arts. The problem with them is you could very easily go bankrupt and still not pull one because of how difficult they are to pull. So while well, thank you for making Moonbrion, thank you for making Rayquaza VMAX, thank you for making that beautiful Dragon IV, um, you made them so damn hard to pull that a lot of people just simply don't even have a dream of having access to them unless they get lucky, okay? Whereas the Scarlet and Violet era SIRs, you kind of took the same, you know, the same beauty, maybe even more beautiful in a lot of sets, and you brought it down just a little, you know, at first you brought it down too much, but now we're getting to where it is actually pretty damn hard to pull an SIR, like only two in a case, like that's getting really close to alt arts, but you still made them more manageable. And so, again, the Sword and Shield era, the, the top, top, top 1% of the cards are incredible, but almost all those cards are damn near impossible to pull, and a lot of them, some of those alt arts aren't worth very much at all. Like, less than a lot of SIRs from this era. Whereas this era, the SIRs are slowly but surely getting harder and harder to pull. But the amount of value you get in the illustration rare category just totally makes up for it. Like, if you don't have a lot of money to spend and you want to buy raw singles from the SV era, you can buy some really beautiful illustration rares that yes, do go up and have a large value in a PSA 10 and have a good chance of going up. Or if you have a little more money, you can go um, buy raw uh, special illustration rares, which, you know, Greninja's freaking on 300 bucks, you know? And again, we have Team Rocket coming, we have Terrastal EV set coming. There are, the best of the Scarlet and Violet era is in front of us. And I'm just telling you, the front half of the Scarlet and Violet era just destroys the front half of the sword and shield era all right it just is what it is like i completely understand people that don't like this era and they like sword and shield but i'm almost getting to a point where i don't because a couple years from now when we look back when both these eras you know you could shut the book on both eras and you could look back at sword and shield and you could look back at scarlet and violet i truly think evolving skies and Crown Zenith are just about it, you know? And whereas Scarlet and Violet, because they feature so many different Pokemon, not even fully evolved Pokemon in a lot of chase cards and a lot of illustration rares, there's literally so many different Pokemon and so many banger artworks of these Pokemon for so many different people. Like, even if you don't love the new stuff, you still have the Charmander, Bulbasaur, and Squirtle IRs that are freaking insane looking okay that's better than any charmander squirtle or bulbasaur from sword and shield like are you kidding me and and before in this previous era doing chase cards on stage one or you know basic pokemon that wasn't even an idea or a thought so all i'm saying is this era has been the best artwork ever it has had some of the most creative ideas in glorifying you know not as fully evolved or popular pokemon and they've done a great job of mixing in Kanto here and there in pretty much every set. And then we all know, you know, Scarlet and Violet 151 is like the greatest set. Like, do not, if you make a tier list and if it's not an S tier, you're in trouble. Trust me. <laughs> okay, so anyway, guys, 
I think just to wrap it up, I'm just letting you know that I think that Paldea involved, it went down 20 or 30 bucks. I think that's about as bad as it's gonna get. And by January, it's gonna be back up and better than ever. I think this era is gonna age like fine wine. And I think as long as the Pokemon company keeps doing what the Pokemon company has been doing, all sealed investments in general will go up, okay? And, and yeah, I think it's about time that people start giving this era the credit it deserves. It is hard to appreciate the now when you're in the now and the now is present. But once it's gone, it's gone. And if you're someone who wants to invest in Paldea or Evolve and you don't take advantage of this opportunity to hop on a case or whatever, you know, you might very much regret it three years from now. All right, that's all I got. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and go over to My Retro Universe and type Mimic Brew on his most recent video to win those 15 packs, whatever. And yeah, until next time, I'll see you guys uh, in a few days on this week's Hottest Cards. Deuces. Do it! Just do it! Don't let your dreams be dreams. Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just do it! Make your dreams come true! Just do it!